right, good evening, and welcome back to Meet Your Candidates, uh, the, the Candidates. I'm Paul Herring, your host, and we are talking to the candidates that are running for city council here in the city of Flint. We want to encourage you not only to stay informed, but we want you to share the information that you see on this show and let other people know that you're voting, and because you're voting, they should vote as well, all right? My guest this evening is Dr. Joyce McNeil. Did I get it right? Mm-hmm. Dr. Joyce McNeil. And she's running for, is it the seventh ward? Eighth. Or eighth ward. Eighth ward. So, Dr. McNeil, why don't you start out by telling me a little bit about yourself? Well, I am a second candidate I ran four years ago for the eighth ward. Uh-huh. Um, I have such a passion for uh, government and politics. And um, I invest a lot and learn about government, how government operates, how decisions are made. And I was a former uh, entrepreneur uh, in the city of Flint. Mm-hmm. I had an encounter with the government. I also wants to be an advocate for small business uh, to under- help the uh, community understand government overreach. So um, I'm concerned about how, as a school teacher, how the uh, water crisis has impacted our students. Mm-hmm. And I want to be that voice because I'm on the ground, I'm on the floor with the students. Um, so I just have such a passion for the whole city, and I just want to make sure that we get to the bottom of the truth. Uh, there's three different data out here, and we need to know the truth. Now, wait a minute. That was that was just tell me a little bit about yourself. You're okay. going into the whole shkabangy right oh, there, actually, huh? I forgive me. You have to cut that. But however, that's who I am. Um, I'm a, just a born grassroots leader. All right. So now, with all that going on, tell me, why are you running for me? Why are for council? My true passion why I'm running uh, for city council again is that we was already in a crisis and I had to make a decision based on the water crisis, based on the data that I received. And I depended on that data, like many other residents, in decision making for your, your family members or your neighbor. And the data that I got was that, and this was before the actual data came out, that my son was dying from third world bacteria. And so I um, had a a very horrible experience because uh, no one was dealing with the bacteria. And I promised my son at 48 hours to feed him two bottles of morphine if he let me put him to sleep. Mm -hmm. I would fight for social justice and this water crisis and get to the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's why you're running, because of the incident you had with your son and the lack of uh, medical care for him? Is that what we're saying? No, I don't know. I'm just saying that was my really motivated initiative. Uh, But my whole concern now is for the whole city. Um, How could we move this city forward? from a crisis to a community resilient Mm -hmm. and being whole and complete again. uh, I have some ideas and goals how we need to get past this water crisis Mm -hmm. and look at the resources we have and how can we make city, the city of Flint, a great comeback story. uh, Utilizing the data that we have, making sure that data is accurate and working with our different entities as well as one of my goals is to bring awareness uh, that the school system really need more help. Okay, all right. Now, understanding that, I need you to tell me why do you what, what do you love about Flint? What what's in your heart about Flint? The part that I love about Flint is that. <clears throat> It's a resilient city. It's, it's a, um, what I love is that there's a lot of opportunities in here to make Flint better. Um, I love the people that I have. Uh, we have a really great caring community. And I just think that we need to um, let the world know that, yes, we have been wounded. Mm-hmm. But I want to show the world that we know how to come back. We know how to pull ourselves together. And that's what I love about Flint, uh, the resources we have, the, the design of Flint. Um, we are going through a revitalization of Flint. 
So um, I just want to be a part of the great comeback story that I believe that can happen. Okay, all right. Well, here, what what do you think makes you a qualified candidate? It's Dr. McNeil. I don't know. Is that medical or psychological, <laughs> uh, physiological, or philosophical? <laughs> I have uh, two PhD, one in uh, biblical theology okay. and one in Christian counseling. All uh, right. Those are my passion. I have a master in public administration. Um, and I also have a bachelor in uh, uh, organization management as well as a degree in uh, computer programming. Um, I feel like my education that I invested in myself gave me the ability to understand government, understand budget, understand the decision making process, and how, my as a public administrator, how that decision process would affect the human rights. Um, that's one of the reasons I studied uh, public administrative administration is that it gives the administrator all different avenues how we make our decision. Mm -hmm. What is moral? What is ethical? Uh, how do we come together? Because you're divided. I work for the pub, I work for the city, and I work for my constituents. So. What is the utmost concern of a public administration, which I always say would be human rights. So I think that if we understand the role of an public administrator, we can be better decision makers. Okay, so you're just saying that your education, your background is what qualifies you to be a candidate. Yes, well, yeah. And I had a business for 14 years working with the uh, early childhood education and at rich youth. Okay. I do pilot programs with, with our, our kids in the community. I work with the parents in the community. I understand the plight of the community and I understand the culture of underserved community. Okay. Well, you know, one of the, uh, the biggest concerns people have with our council is the unity amongst council members. How do you resolve conflict and how will you handle uh, those relationships? I think what we have to do is that coming aboard, we need to spend time with each other to understand uh, what our concerns are. What One of my pet peeves when I'm in a collective group of people, I find out what your moral and ethical belief system is. Because what is moral to me might not be moral to you. What is unethical to me might not be ethical to you. So we got to solve that problem before we can go before the uh, community, we need to understand each other. Mm -hmm. We need to learn how to respect each other. And I would like to see us come together as a, in a community or as a committee and let's go. We have to assume that everybody's at ground zero uh, on that city council because what you know, I might not know. So what we have to assume that everybody's at ground zero. What is the ultimate goal of the city council? That one vote that I carry has absolutely nothing to do with me. That one vote represents the five or six thousand residents that I represent. Now, what, what do you say to the folks that say, hey, I voted for you because I like the way you think and I'm trusting you to vote my conscience as your conscience? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that's where a, a, a lot of problem comes in. When do you decide for yourself and not for your constituents? I really think that your conscious, clear conscious should be your guide. But at the same time, some people hear what they hear, I hear with my heart. And you can hear uh, what the majority of the people are saying and what is it is that they want, what is more. But then at the same time, let's be realistic. What you want might not be what you can get. And I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to tear down every house on your block. I'm not going to, I'm not running off of that campaign. Mm -hmm. What I'm running off of is uh, vital information. Uh, I can give you information. We can sit down, we can read together. What I would like to do is create a more uh, community forum where everybody I can talk to, we can get, uh, I'm working on that process as well, where we can talk about what's going on. Um, Speaking of, let's talk about the Charter Review Commission. The Charter Review Commission is finished with their job. 
they're getting ready to put this thing in front of the people for a vote. Have you decided a yay or nay? I'm constantly reading it. Um, I'm, I do have some questions about it, mm -hmm. uh, some of the things I'm reading. And then at the same time, I'm speaking with my resident. Majority of the residents have not even, do, do not even know mm -hmm. that there's a new charter review is coming up. And so we have not did a good job in making sure uh, we're on the assumption that people have what you have to get data. Mm -hmm. So um, this is going to be a very um, interesting how this is going to come about. But I think we have to roll out to the... Uh, community exactly what has changed. I know, but I'm asking you now. Oh, no, you're I'm asking, asking me, you, are I, you for or against the proposed changes in the charter? Most of the changes I'm for Beautiful. in the charter. Okay. Uh, most of the, and I think it's time that um, our charter be changed. It's almost kind of imperative that it be changed. Okay. So now my next one is, is the water lanes, right? 4,000 water lanes. Where are you standing on that? I don't believe in putting a lien against anybody's property as myself a home owner. Uh, my insurance went from $1,200 to $2,600 a year. Mm -hmm. um, the insurance, if you file a claim, they're going to cancel you out. My house is not worth, I owe more on the house than it's worth. Um, how can you put a lien on some port? How you put poison against my house? And my house has already been attacked. From a um, from a realtor's standpoint, our house is not worth any money. So what did you put the lien on it for? The house is not worth anything. What? Well, as I said, that's another way of getting around that. Okay, so I'm going to take that as I know. Uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> a resounding no. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't put nothing right. against the citizen. Well, nothing. <laughs> we got a little bit of time left, but I want to ask you. Recently, um, the recent council approved a 10-year contract with Comcast. Are you familiar with public access at all? Mm -hmm. Okay. They just uh, recently did a 10-year contract which would have given them the opportunity to pile up uh, money for capital equipment, for equipment in nursing homes and uh, rec centers and schools and city hall, the dome and all that. And they denied that. Now, are you a supporter of public access and would you have voted for a 10-year contract? Yes, I am. I'm the owner of Round 2 Research and Education Center. Uh -huh. What I do is try to put community technology center in a side of uh, community mm -hmm. that do not have access to it. Because um, technology is like a book. They used to say you didn't want a person to know something, you put the book on the shelf and they'll never get to it. Well, technology, if you want to keep a person in dark and keep them behind, you make sure that they never have access mm -hmm. to technology. I would have not voted for that because that's a passion for me. Uh, that's my greatest pet peeve is that I, I run off of that. I ran off of it in my last four years that we have to open that door, an opportunity for any way of technology and communication. That's important for Flint to move forward. The reason why is that because people cannot get vital information. Agreed. Agreed. Good answer, as they say. Good answer. Yeah, it's the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> All right. Got a couple minutes left, and in the short time we have left, I want you to look straight at the camera, and I want you to convince people to either help you with yard signs, uh, uh, help you make phone calls, or just vote for you. Can you do that for sure. me? Sure. All right. Go ahead. Hi. I'm Joyce Ellis Mike Neal. I'm running for the 8th Ward. I'm running off of my strength and my belief. I'm not running with people donating into my funding account. What I get is people can give me stamps. You can buy a yard sign. Or you can go to .com. I'm Yeah, .com. And you can contact me. You can contact me at 810-820-5635. I do need volunteer. I need a little bit more support. Uh, getting my uh, yard signs and my literature out. Uh, you will see me out here camming mostly by myself because I don't want to owe no man nothing. I don't want to be bought. I can't be bought. So I'm relying upon the residents support me, not the politician. Nobody's behind me but my husband and God. So if the resident think that I'd be a good candidate, 
you know, uh, I need your support. Piece of cake, right? Piece of cake. All right, guys. It's Meet the Candidates. There will be more after this. Thank you.